Hey, what's up YouTube, Boulder here, and I'm playing some more Flight Simulator 10. This time, I am in the Lockheed L-10, so Dovetail Games decided to create an expansion. I should stop saying expansion and admit that it's DLC, because, you know, expansion packs are dead. No, they're not dead, they just transformed into downloadable content. Either way, I am flying the Lockheed L-10, and this is the first leg of Around the World in 80 Flights. Now, I am pretty tempted to do an entire video series based off of Around the World in 80 Flights, but that would be mind-numbingly stupid. Well, not stupid, but definitely crazy, and I don't even know if I have the time. But yeah. This just came out today, and it's 17 US dollars if you want to grab it. I don't know what your region's equivalent is. So, yeah. You can go ahead and pick it up. The question is, is it worth it? Well, mission-wise, I'll find out. Aircraft-wise, no. If you just want to fly this airplane, there are so many mods out there that odds are somebody somewhere created a very accurate representation of the Lockheed L-10. So uh, with that said, we are in... I don't even remember where we are. Uh, we're in... Farnborough. Alright, yeah. I can't remember British cities, so... You know, sue me. But we're going to be flying to Paris. They say it's going to be a 90... minute flight, so... Yeah, a bunch of skipping on this one. And I don't really follow the taxi lines that well because you know, I'm really not that careful, I should say, when it comes to simulators. I believe there is a difference between simulators and real life, and you can get away with a lot of things in simulators. Not so much real life. If you taxi like you're drunk, you are definitely going to get some police attention. But either way, we're just briskly taxiing along. It's actually really easy to start up this airplane, I kid you not. And it is, for the most part, a very interesting concept. Now, of course, Dovetail Games, for those who don't know, they create a train simulator series, and they are very big on DLC. This actually comes to no surprise whatsoever. The amount of DLC that they give you is intense. It is so ridiculously expansive. For their train simulator series, in one of their games, you can actually buy up to $1,000 worth of expansion packs. They go nuts on this stuff. So, that's definitely worrisome in their next line of development for Flight Simulator games, but since Flight Simulator is 10 is so fleshed out, you can definitely avoid purchasing all these things. And, honestly, I view this stuff more as an added bonus than anything really restrictive in terms of, well, what your average free-to-play or DLC bundle comes with. So, you know, nothing really too much to worry about. Buying this is completely 100% optional. You can enjoy the Flight Simulator 10 Steam Edition. However, I should warn you, if you are using Track IR, you have to do a bit of modification, and the modification is way beyond my head. I am not joking, it's kind of sad. <laughs> so, with that said, we're still taxiing. I am kind of surprised how big this airport is. I'm guessing it's an international airport? No, it can't be. It looks very regional. It looks very municipal, for that matter. But we're still going to continue on. I don't have any scenery add-ons or anything like that. It's all mostly vanilla. But I am getting a smooth 100 frames per second on this thing. They recently updated this to give you more mod compatibility and definitely more graphical performance boosts. And I have to say, I am impressed just by what they did. So, yay! Kudos to Dovetail. They're doing a really good job so far. 
I was definitely worried for a little bit, but why be worried? Everything is under control, right? Right? Oh, well, we'll find out. But anyway, we're coming to the uh, runway line. And we've been cleared IFR to three, 13,000 feet. So I'm just going to stop here, idle the engines, and I'm going to put the brakes on here. And now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna actually going to change that to uh, the tail. There we go. That works. Yeah, I'm going to go to the virtual cockpit. I'm going to uh, throttle up the RPMs to oh, about... Yeah, 10,000 RPMs seems pretty good. Or is that 1,000 RPMs? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 10,000 RPMs. those go off. Mixture. I do not see any indication on my uh, aircraft that this is really doing anything. But so far, at that looks all right. Now I'm gonna turn the boost pumps back on. Don't know why that pencil's there. It just is. Farnborough Tower, Maki, Golf, Whiskey, Romeo, Lima, Delta, ready to go. Runway six, IFR to Orly. Maki, Golf, Whiskey, Romeo, Lima, Delta. Alright, come on. Clear for takeoff, runway 6, Lockheed, Golf, Whiskey, Romeo, Lima, Delta. Sounds good to me, I'm going to turn the nav lights on. And just taxi, ever so gently. Okay, we're good to go. We're just gonna swing wildly around here, and wow, turning a tail dragger is a little different, I should mention. Oh well, full throttle, we are taking off. Good. Quite nice. Now, I don't even know if this thing can even climb to 13,000 feet. Find out. But so far, so, so good. We're going to take our GPS. Uh, is that so? You know, I definitely need to consider improving the graphics. I appreciate Microsoft for what they did, getting all this satellite imagery. We're just seeing ghosts of uh, 2006 past, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but... Oh well, moving on. I definitely need to pay attention, but yeah. I am going to 
pretty much skip to landing in Paris just so that I don't bore you guys to death. Audience retention is actually important in the YouTube videos, so with that said, I'll see you there. Alright, so continuing from where we last left off, we were flying across the English Channel all the way into France, and I have to say we are getting pretty close to our destination. However, unfortunately I do have to mention that the IFR is really screwed in these missions. They want me to climb it to 23,000 feet, and I'm like, no, that's not gonna happen. Not in this old thing. But we are beginning our final descent into Paris, and I'm probably doing a premature descent, but either or, it's gonna get me into Paris regardless. And if I get too low, oh well, then I can hug the ground for a little bit until things get a little bit closer. I've been also flying on the right seat for some reason because that's where all the autopilot stuff is. And oh, that is just a terrible view. Well, props up to 100%. There we go. Get ourselves lined up with the GPS. This will take a little bit of time, but it shouldn't take too long. Speed is actually quite fast as well, so not too concerned. It'll take me about, well, it says nine minutes to get to the next waypoint, and I'm guessing the other one's going to be about five minutes, if my math serves me correctly. I mean, it just depends on the ground speed, and uh, we're going pretty fast, 161 knots. That's about as fast as it takes for a jet airliner to take off. But, moving on. This mod is something that was pretty expected, because, as I said before, Dovetail is really infamous for handing out a lot of DLC. And by a lot, this is just the one, and it's only going to be one out of many to come. And I'm not going to be able to afford them all, and I'm not even going to try to afford them all. But I'm going to give you a quick glimpse on what their DLC looks like from time to time, and we'll see how it goes. Consider this a quick review, and to be honest, I really do like this mission. Just the idea of it, to travel the world, and it just programs everything into place for you, so it makes things easier. And if you want to make things easier, then I have absolutely no problem with that. So, I guess moving on, this plane actually handles quite well. I haven't tried landing this thing, but I can't imagine it being that terrible either. It is definitely a sexy plane. If I was a millionaire, I would get one of these things from the junkyard and I would refurbish it, learn how to fly this thing, and actually try to fly around the world. I probably wouldn't want to fly into Egypt, even though that's where the route takes me. Egypt is a little bit unstable at the moment, no offense to anyone who lives there, but seriously, that place scares the shit out of me. I'd much rather be in Russia. So, moving on, I have to say, not a whole lot. This is... <laughs> this is pretty much just another mission. One out of 80, and for what it gives you, you know, I guess it is pretty much worth the price tag, but it all really depends. This is this is pretty good quality, but not PMDG quality. Is that the name of the company? I'm not sure. <laughs> Flight Simulator Geeks, please help me on that one. Yeah, the controls are quite responsive. You have the throttle mixture controls, you have the boost pumps, the primers, the starters. It didn't take me any effort to actually start a primer, or even start an engine. You just needed to hit the starter. No boost pump or anything like that. Landing lights, uh... Well, all the lights are controlled by the co-pilot. A co-pilot which I do not have. So, 
So that's something you should probably keep in mind. It's not too bad though. Landing lights can, I guess, stay on. Who cares? I can only imagine the billionaires that are just sitting there getting drunk off of wine or whatever they choose to get drunk of. Maybe Pabst Blue Ribbon. That's definitely a high class beer, right? I used to think that um, Stella was a high class beer. And a Belgian quickly corrected me on that. It's like the Budweiser of their country. I wonder if scenery textures can actually work on this now. I haven't really tried. It hasn't bothered me. Currently, I do get quite a high frame rate. This is definitely going to be in a uh, 30 FPS video, though, because the file is going to be way too big. Which is a shame, but it is what it is. And I would not complain about it. Heading around, everything looks good. We're definitely losing a bit of altitude. Gaining some speed, though. We are gaining a lot of speed. I guess I descended way too soon. But I don't really mind hugging the ground. In fact, I'm going to level off at 3,000 feet. I know I'm VFR and I should be at... Uh, I don't know how the Europeans choose their... Uh, I don't know how Europeans choose which altitude people go to. I think it's the same as America's. So, I should be actually going at 3,500 or something along the lines. But who knows, I did not buy this game to have it as an exact science. That by no means is my goal. Uh, what kind of temperature is that? Is that the oil temp? I guess I get. I guess I've been pushing this thing a little bit too hard, and I'm not really too surprised either because this plane was trying to climb up to 13,000 feet, and then the air traffic controller told me to climb to 23,000 feet, and it's like, no, fuck you, dovetail, done, goofed. I am not going to climb to 23,000 feet. I don't even know if this plane can be pressurized, for that matter. Is it the Stratocruiser that is? It, yeah, it is a Stratocruiser. The manifold pressure is definitely to be kicking my ass, and maybe that's why I've had such a high oil temp. Oh well. It is what it is, and we're about to reach the next waypoint anyway. And then it'll uh, take quite a while for me to get into Paris anyway. So, I guess it's time for another time to skip. No, that was not a pun. So... I'm officially in Paris. Look at that beautiful city that's in... trapped inside this poorly detailed world. Yeah, I know, it's a 2006 technology. Maybe I should actually change some of the uh, texture settings and maybe even upgrade it a little bit. But I see the nuclear power plant. I'm assuming if I get too close to that, a missile will shoot me down. Hey, it's possible, you know? Who would have thumped it? But we are going to be descending into the uh, 
Not the glide slope. Yes, the glide slope of Paris's airport. I think this is the Orly Airport instead of the Charles de Gaulle Airport. I think. I could be totally wrong, and I could mess everything up, but... So far, not so much. And these nuclear stacks are glitching the fuck out. Hmm. You see that? I don't know what's causing that. I wonder if that's just an upgrade from the dovetail... Um, the dovetail upgrade. Oh uh, yeah, I see that. I guess I should get our nearest airport list. I don't know which one it is. ORW. Um, that's going to be Orly, isn't it? No, that's LP. Oh, no. That's not the airport. Ah, who needs air traffic control? Notice the sarcasm there. Yeah, that was a little bit way too premature. Is there a spoiler on this plane? No. I guess I do have to look out and see what I'm doing. Turning on anti-aliasing may not be a bad idea either. That's pretty jarring, to be honest. Yeah, this is a fast little plane. I am quite shocked. I'm not entirely shocked, but it's still something I have to keep in mind. doesn't help that I'm in a perpetual nosedive, that's for sure. And this is why I need track IR. Alright, I'll remix you. Those are some really extended flaps. That's almost a 90 degree angle. Definitely something along the lines of 70 degrees. Jeez. Oh well. Gear time. That'll give us some... Does it not even show me the gear lights? Now that I look at it, this may not be the most detailed aircraft in the world, and I doubt it's an accurate representation of the Lockheed L-11. Or, not L-11, L-10. If it was the L-11, it would take almost no time to get to Paris. I don't even know if... The Farnsborough Airport could even support an L-1011 for that matter, so who knows? Or an L-10, yeah, L-1011. I need to remember what I'm talking about, but yeah, I'm in the nice glide slope. There's quite a bit of air traffic near me, but not nearly as bad as what it should be. I'm going to cut down on some of the thrust, get down to altitude as well. I'm going to be, I guess, eyeballing it. I'm going to do a bit of barnstorming, defy the rules, and not look at my instruments. This is after a VFR flight. 
I canceled the IFR, remember? So I just need to be looking outside. And for those of you who have a stick up their ass and think that I'm promoting reckless flying, no I'm not. I take aviation very, very, very seriously. And I do not believe that anyone should ever do this. They should never, ever, ever approach an airport this size without ever contacting air traffic control. That not only is illegal, but it'll probably get you killed as well. And announcing or landing without any type of declaration or any type of request, that will get you killed pretty quickly because in an airport like this, you're going to be having A380s, 747s, 737s especially just taking off nonstop. It is a busy international airport. Uh, I don't think it's as busy as the Charles de Gaulle airport, but Orly is very busy, and it has a lot of international flights. And it takes off frequently, and it's enough to be in a really controlled airspace. But we have uh, two reds and two whites. That's a good glide slope. I'm going to increase my... RPMs a little bit, but I will take things in a simulator very lightly because I understand that this is not real life. And I understand that in real life there is no reset switch, there is no quick load switch, there is no switch to reset you if you die. If you die, you die. And I guess that's the end of it. Well, I know that's the end of it, unless you turn into a zombie or some type of religious thing, but... In the end, I'd rather not get to that point. I'd like to just stay on the glide slope. I am a little bit above it, so I need to be cutting down the throttle just a little bit. Be center-lined as well. And is that an advertisement for... I don't even know what that symbol is for. I wonder if that is ad placement of some sort. I wouldn't be too surprised. Alright. Throttle is idle. I even know how to land a tail dragger. What I'm awfully concerned about is activating the brakes too much and just nose diving, but it looks like I landed. How about that? So, this is Flight Simulator 10, and this is the Around the World in 80 Flights add-on pack. You can get it on Steam for about $17, or whatever your regional equivalent is. And the question is, is it worth it? Yeah, it's actually quite fun. I have to admit, I'm just going to stop here. Why not? But anyway, tell me in the comments sections. Uh, tell me in the comments section whether you want me to continue this series or not. This is quite fun, and I will say it is definitely worth your money if you're into this type of thing. However, I will say that I am a little bit disappointed in the quality of the cockpit. I thought that I would actually have a gear lever. I guess not, or gear lights. Maybe the real plane doesn't have that. Who knows? But, either way, the flight model is a little bit disappointing, especially the virtual cockpits, and the missions are definitely the meats of this game, even though you could totally make this up yourself. 
Somebody could mod this into the game and then uh, charge you nothing for it, though. I would be, wouldn't be too surprised if you get a copyright claim for that. Either way, that should be it for today. Tell me if you want me to turn this into a series. I will gladly do all 80 flights for you. So with that said, like and favorite this video and subscribe. There are plenty more videos where that came from, so you have a nice day.